Hey, is this bad? I was watching last night when I was ignoring my wife being a fucking child myself. Uh, and they were interviewing these homeless people who have like no place to go and all of that type of stuff. And they were just saying, you know, we sit here and we see people shopping for Christmas. And, you know, I'm thinking like, uh, you know, I wish I had a family. I wish I had somewhere to go. And it was making me feel bad. But, you know, I just went to wish one time they just interviewed just the lazy homeless person who was just like, yeah, you know, I just never liked having a job. And uh, one thing came to another. and I ended up out here and, uh, you know, kind of sucks in the winter. But overall, it's not bad. You know, for as much as I wear the same pants every fucking day, I can take a nap whenever I want to. I don't have anybody telling me what to do. Right? I'm eating. Drinking. I'm fucking hanging out. Just sort of existing. Ah, it's still it's still going to suck. I think it'd be better to be homeless out in the woods. At least you're enjoying nature. Right? If I was fucking homeless, I'd be homeless down near like a ballpark. Now, nah, where can you where can you take a shower? The big thing is you got to take a shower. You know what would be awesome is if you knew some place where you could shower and a place where you could steal new clothes every four to five days. And then you could just sort of walk around and just not have a fucking job. You know? Sleep outside. You get used to it after a while. I mean, when you really think about it, as much as they're homeless, aren't they just sort of cavemen in the modern day? I mean, we fucking slept outside back in the day. Native Americans slept in teepees. You had a little bit of shelter. You can't tell me like a box isn't in the same family tree as far as shelter. It's lower than a teepee or a fucking cave. You know, like when they do the coaches like tree, like I was telling you, where Paul Brown in in his coaching tree was Don Shula, Bill Walsh, Chuck Knoll, Bud Grant. Like, say like the cave, you got the cave and the family tree off of that's got to be the fucking teepee, the wigwag, the cardboard box, uh, refrigerator with no door on it, right? That'd be an interesting series, the upside of being homeless. I think it's even better if you're like just uh, if you're sort of a booze hound, you know, I don't mean like just like killing yourself. I just mean like shit faced, like every day you drink like you're going to a game and you just get fucking hammered. Right. And you're just sort of hanging out on the street. I'm sorry, people. I'm trying to, you know, this podcast started out so negative. I figure I'd take something negative and maybe put a little sunshine on it. You know, like I tell you, you know, who's crushing it. People who are homeless in Santa Monica. You're literally homeless where people vacation, you know, or like Marina Del Rey. Just walking around looking for a boat nobody's been on in a minute, right? You curl up on the deck, just lay in there. Arr, matey. All right, maybe it does suck. I think it would just get exhausting after a while because I've, I've locked myself out of the house, you know, a couple of times, more times than I would like to admit. And I got to tell you, just sitting around outside is uh, it's fucking exhausting. It's probably why cavemen were never fat. A lot of people think it's because they didn't eat as much, but it was just that exhausting, uh, the stress of not having a door that you could just fucking close and lock and know that nothing was going to come along and eat you. I think uh, I think that's stress alone. Did I just invent a new diet? Hi, everybody. This is Bill Burr. I have a new diet for you. It's called the remove your front door and go to sleep at night diet you'll wake up every eight seconds and the stress of it there's got to be something in there you you throw in yogurt and just say probiotic you know you ever wonder why our ancestors were in such great shape it's because they were in fear for their lives 24 7 even when they were sleeping they, they, their metabolism was still going because at any second they realized that they might have to outrun a wildebeest right if we could just somehow get back to that three days a week if you just removed your front door and went and fell asleep on the couch closest to the front, <laughs> to the front door. You know what that reminds me of? I remember one time I met this shady chick on the road, and we fucking hooked up. And uh, it seemed everything was cool at first, and then like she started telling her story. You know, you start steering the conversation towards sex. You know what I mean? Just you know, shit you do in your twenties. You don't have any game. And she started telling me how. Uh, 
Yeah, but, but oh God, I'm going back so far. You make when you talk to a woman, right? You start talking to them about sex, okay? And they're open to it. And you ever had that experience where you're like, oh yeah, here we go. It's all set. It's all set. It's all set. And then it just passes that tipping point to be like, ah, right, well, you know, I got, you know, obviously going to wear a condom. It's not that bad. All the way to the point of like, holy fuck. All right, you know what? I, I, forget it. F- forget it. You know, this was a bad idea. That's what happened with this. This person was open. And I uh, was discussing things, and uh, I don't know how we went from, uh, hey, I think you're kind of cute, you want to hang out, to her telling me that she hosted a sex party. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, what, 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 what did you say? She goes, I hosted a sex party. And she said, I said, what is a, uh, what's a sex party? And she goes, well, you know, you rent out all the rooms on the same hotel floor. And then everybody just leaves their doors open and people just walk around going in and out of each room and you just fuck whoever's in there. (laughs) So at that point, I decided that, all right, I don't know if I have the level of protection. I don't know if they make a condom for that. So, uh... What, what did, we did things that there was no way that you could get catch anything is basically it. And then I didn't know how to get her out of there. So we fucking fell asleep. And I, this is when I was really introverted and didn't know how to say what the fuck I was thinking. I remember she was sleeping on the right side of the bed. And it just so happened my watch um, was on that side nightstand. And I was on the other side of the bed. And I swear to God, I woke up like fucking like 58 times that night. Just kept getting up looking, seeing her there and making sure the watch was there. Rather than just being like, listen, can uh, can you just get the fuck out? I wouldn't say if you get the fuck out of here. Um, but, you know, I bet I lost a lot of weight that night. 